hello everyone hope you guys are doing well so just to catch up before i start um everything's kind of still been the same my life literally doesn't seem like it changes um but just been doing homework um starting some of my essays that i have due early um hanging out with my kids taking them outside a little more since the weather's been um kind of good ish um also trying to get like my schedule for next semester kind of figured out um early so i kind of know what's going on but other than that i've been good um just basically here for the most part but to start off um i did go ahead and decide to choose jonathan harvey for this week's composer report and um he was born in sudden cofield on may 3rd in 1939 and he died in sussex on december 4th in 2012 which um, actually wasn't that long ago. So it's kind of interesting that, well, it's not interesting that he died, but it's interesting that it was closer to like our time. I guess that makes sense. Um, his father was a big supporter of him doing music at a young age. So he did start composing at a very young age in his life. He would study with Erwin Stein and Hans Keller. And um, he was also influenced by Bartok and Britain and many other people actually had an influence on him as well but it was like a long long list so I didn't want to <laughs> add everybody in there but there was a lot of people that influenced him to want to compose music. Um, he was able to create his Harvey Symphony in 1966 and it had a di diverse amount of sources that actually were included within it. He studied at Princeton with Babbitt um, for a short period of time in order to strengthen his learning of post-tonal composition systems and also the electroacoustic techniques as well. He started off um, with a piece that was named Martuas Plango Vivos Vocal. I don't know if I said that right, but that's kind of like what I heard when I heard the title name. Um, that was made in 1980. And he used the sounds of like bells as well as a boy soprano as the voice for the um, piece as well. Um, it was kind of interesting that he didn't really need like an extravagant amount of instruments or anything like that. He just used like two things and was able to compose the piece that he wanted, which was like pretty interesting. Sorry if you can hear my daughter and husband in the background. Um, but yeah it wasn't very extravagant but just the two instruments that he had they basically did the trick for him and he was able to get like the piece done and everything like that um so the piece that had a big impact on his work was bhakti bhakti i think does that make sense um it had a mix of musical characters and a range of different expressions that made it like a very big and astounding um, composition that he created. He did prefer um, the elect electronic um, music, if that makes sense. And he liked the transformations that basically um, would allow him to end up exploring um, the intense characteristics within the music and the sounds of the different instruments. So that was pretty interesting to learn as well. Um, throughout his career, he did compose. Ah, he did compose two operas as well, <clears throat> and um, they were called "The Passion and Resurrections," which that one was made in 1981, and "The Inquest of Love" was made in um, 1991. Well, 1991 through 1992, because it had both dates on there as well. His composing um, did kind of drift from like a basic concept, and he was more like diverse in all of his pieces so it wasn't like just stuff you would hear <clears throat> everybody doing but he was very broad and just diverse in everything that he did um so also in 1995 he started giving lectures at berkeley and he was just basically teaching others his beliefs that he had in music so that was pretty interesting to learn that he did end up being a, a professor basically like lecturing um other students as well so for the song, I did decide to go with Mortuus Plango Vivos Vocal just because I, I wanted to see like exactly what like the song sounded like since it was just a bell and like soprano, uh, soprano boy. So as the song started right away, it sounded like everything was clashing and it was very like disson dissonance and um Things just didn't seem like they were fitting together 
and um that kind of like threw me off but as it continued um the bell sounds like started to just like drift into kind of fitting together still kind of clashing but it fit together a little bit more um there was a church bell that was played in the background which i thought was pretty cool because it was like a sound that i knew that um was familiar to me and the voice of the boy it comes and goes it's very brief but it's very light as well like the sound and pitch of his voice is very 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 low um the bells do have like a high and medium pitch but it's still very eerie and it kind of reminded me of some of the pieces that we listened to before um in the past in the beginning of the class because some of those were eerie as well so it kind of had like a familiar sound um with this piece as well and also the tempo was slow it just almost drags along um with the sound of the bells and everything like that but um other than that overall it brings like a peaceful sound but it's still like weird in a way um but i did like it overall i, I like weird stuff so it just kind of flowed with me um and other than that i think i think that's it and um i hope you guys have a great weekend and a great week next week and i'll see you guys on the next report thank you